Hi, I'm Mike, and today I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk about VMware. Now, I've been using VMware ESXi on the server side for quite a number of years now, um, but usually my usage of it is, is pretty simplistic in that I just have a bunch of virtual machines uh, all sharing the same network connection and, and kind of just isolating uh, services to individual virtual machines. Um, but about a year ago, I was looking into rebuilding uh, an ESXi server, and I was wanting to find a way to make it more secure. Um, I didn't want to have to worry as much about configuring firewalls and stuff on each individual virtual machine. That's a lot of work, and there's a lot of places where you can mess up. Um, and so what I wanted to uh, what I wanted to do is is kind of find a way to isolate those virtual uh, all the virtual machines and like minimize how much exposure they had to the rest of the network. Um, the way I came out to uh, came up with doing that is to actually create kind of this uh, this model of like a a small network inside um, the ESX host. And so uh, this here would be like an entire ESX host. And the idea is, is that I would have a single virtual machine running firewall software, and that would be the only virtual machine that talked to the outside world. And then have a second uh, virtual switch on the inside where all the other virtual machines could be connected to it. And so it's kind of analogous to if you have a, a, a single firewall, uh, and then a bunch of machines behind it, and that firewall it kind of protects, it gives you a layer of, of uh, security um, between your, your uh, computers and the outside world. Um, and so, and ESX lets you do this. They let you add more than one, it's called a virtual switch. Um, and so, keep the original setup of the virtual switch the way it is, and that's going to be your outside switch. The second switch that you add, you just add a virtual switch one, or, or name it whatever you want. Um, I, I believe there's something in the interface where you can configure a port group. In this instance, just keep it one of the same. Have a port group for one switch and another port group for the other switch. Um, and then you have one virtual machine that that is connected to both of those virtual switches, and and this is your this is your firewall. Um, for me, I use. Um, PFSense, which is a distribution uh, based on FreeBSD um, that has a real nice interface on it. Uh, it works really well as, as a router and firewall. Um, and so I, I, I installed that on this virtual machine. And it doesn't take much. I mean, it's, I gave, think I gave it about 10 gigs of disk, uh, just a single processor, uh, a couple of gigs of RAM, and that's it. And, and it's it's more than enough than uh, resources for, for doing uh, just a, a job like this where you're shuffling packets around. Um, so yeah, I, I configure that firewall, configure the second virtual switch, and then all the other virtual machines are all just attached to this, this second virtual switch. And there's, there's a lot of benefits to this. I mean, because you have this kind of isolation, all the other virtual machines are, are kind of hidden away. Um, and, and there's lots of benefits to doing it this way. Um, for one thing, you only have one firewall to manage, and so you don't have to worry about installing individual firewalls on the virtual machines um, to kind of restrict uh, different ports that it's allowing through. All your firewall configuration is done on the single uh, in installation of PFSense. Um, and, and that PFSense is real nice, the, the interface that it gives you for that, so um, that's kind of handy. Um, the other thing, benefit that you can do is you can use NAT when you have a limited number of IP addresses. Um, and so if you have like a home internet connection with a single IP address, you, you use network address translation to basically allow all your home computers and phones and so forth um, to, to talk using that single IP address. On the server side, you might have a, a pool of IP addresses. Um, for this, for one of my servers I have, I, I think, 13 usable IP addresses. Um, and so, but, but in PFSense, it will allow you to add those addresses as virtual IPs, and you can assign those IPs to a virtual machine behind, uh, behind the, the firewall. Um, and so it's really uh, convenient. It, it works the same way as it did before, but there's just that extra layer. Um, another benefit to this kind of setup is that you can add virtual machines that only talk to other virtual machines. 
Um, and so you can have a virtual machine with no public interface to, to the rest of the internet. Um, and, and that's really nice for things like if you have a log server running syslog, um, or if you're, you want to share files between several virtual machines, so you want to have kind of a file server running NFS, um, then these can be separate virtual machines that don't have any outside interface to the rest of the world. Um, and, so, and so that's really kind of handy. Um, the, the last benefit or main benefit is that you can restrict the management of your virtual machines to only allow um, connections from other trusted uh, internet addresses. And so let me, let me tell you more about what, what I mean by that. Um, for, for my kind of setup, what I like to do is actually, since I have a full firewall here, I can set up a connection from, from a, an office firewall and have a VPN going between those two, those two uh, firewalls. Um, and what this allows me to do is say that I can have uh, anything that's on this internal network here talk to this internal network over here and not have kind of any firewall in between them. Um, and so for this, I can set this up to say, okay, if there's an SSH connection coming in from the VPN, then yeah, sure, go ahead and allow it through to, to go to one of these private virtual machines. But if you're coming in from, from the outside internet, don't allow SSH to pass uh, through the firewall. Um, and so this really gives you that uh, real, very real security benefit because you're, you're plugging holes that aren't available to the outside world but are just available for VPN links. Um, and so the other nice thing is with that is, is that when you're connecting over the VPN, it's, you're, you're using a private address space um, and it just, it, it, you have kind of more direct access to the private virtual machines even though, uh, even though you, there's an, an extra step along the way to get there. It, it just feels like you're on the same network when, when you're managing it. Um, and so, yeah, in, in order to set that up, I mean, that, that's beyond the scope of this, of this video, but I mean, you would have a separate internal address space for, for this network and this network. They'd be on different subnets. And so if you had one name, uh, number 10.1.1, and, and use that subnet, then over here you would have 10.1.2. Or if you use the 192.168 um, subnets, you could do it that way as well. And just, just pick a different ad, uh, a subnet address uh, on each network so that uh, when, when they're talking to each other, they know uh, where to route the packets. Um, so yeah, this is really, it, it has worked out really well for me. I, I've had this, I, I've installed this now on, on two different servers, um, and, and I can see myself using this kind of setup uh, from here on out, just because it simplifies the management um, of, like, of the firewall setup, it simplifies the management of the virtual machine setup, it makes it a lot more secure for the virtual machines, and it just, the, the list goes on of, of the, the very real benefits to setting up this kind of uh, 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 virtual network configuration. Um, so I totally recommend it. If you have questions about it, or if you want me to cover any particular topic regarding this in more detail, because I know I'm, this is a very high overlay of just an overview of what, what kind of this, this, how this works, um, let me know in the comments below. Uh, and uh, click the like button if you found this useful. Uh, subscribe to my other videos. I, I do videos on photography and computing. Um, and so I have fun with that. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.